I'm Nikki. I'm Kate. And this is our review of the Hyundai Ioniq 5 All-Wheel Drive Limited. I'm driving in normal mode right now, but there are two other modes that we should talk about. There is the sport mode where the dashboard turns into this rather fetching shade of red. It gives you a remapped throttle response, which gives you more acceleration. You get a torque meter down the bottom to see how much power you're actually putting to the road. And of course, you get more regenerative braking on liftoff. It really is a very sporty, engaging drive. And I have to say, I've been using this on country roads because it allows me to just carve up mountain passes a lot more easily. For city commuting, though, eco mode is really good because it actually turns off the front motor altogether and then it behaves more like the rear wheel drive car. And because of the type of motor that this has, it is possible to turn the motor off and not, you know, have any negative effects on range. Yeah, it really significantly extends your range turning off that front motor and turns this car into a much more long-legged vehicle because it, it must be said when you drive it in sport or in normal mode at freeway speeds it is not super efficient. I think I saw 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour on my way up to you to drop this car off and I think you saw about the same coming back. Yes, yeah. The other mode that we should mention, however, and it's a really useful one for people living out in areas that get snow, is it has a snow mode. Which a lot of cars don't have. And it's nice to see it coming back. You know, Toyota used to have a snow mode with the RAV4 EV. You could put it in if you lived in certain markets. This car now has a snow mode. It reduces the amount of torque that is metered out to the motor that will reduce your wheel spin and reduces the chance that you're going to get stuck. I would suspect it's also somewhat more cautious with its traction control, but it hasn't snowed here, so we haven't had a chance to test that. Auto wipers, really useful on a day like today, when it's just, you know, typical Portland weather. Auto lights as well. This is the top trim package, so you lose some stuff, but in terms of a daily commute, which is effectively what we're mimicking here, a few junctions on the freeway and then a couple of miles in stop go traffic through town sort of two lane city streets simple easy drive nothing stressful about it while the car has great acceleration there's a an uncomfortable whine that emits from the rear of the vehicle under heavy acceleration uphill i did hear it i heard it a couple of times on the way down here and yeah it's quite irritating when it's there when I test drove the 2021 variant, I did not notice that. So I don't know if it's just this car. Well, if you remember, the EV6 also has some weird noises that it produces, and there was a recall out for it, I believe. Yeah, so I don't know whether that's something that's affecting this particular vehicle or whether it's a more widespread issue. Like all of the previous Kia and Hyundai vehicles, we have paddle shifters which allow you to dial in your regenerative braking. And in cities, that's really useful because you can set it to coast. If you've got kind of stop and go traffic, you might want to put it into a higher level of regen. But because you have these paddle shifters, as you do with all EGMP platform cars, you can very easily control the amount of regenerative braking that the car dials in without needing to shift gears, without having to take your hands off the wheel. I really like that, Kate. I find the iPedal has been really well judged and configured. It brings the car to a stop really smoothly, and it does so 
when you let your foot off the pedal. It's not like some of the other vehicles I've driven which try and guesstimate when they should stop for the car ahead of you. It does it when you tell it to, which I really like. And as far as I can tell, it pretty much always engages the auto hold, which will mean if someone runs into you at the stop sign or at a traffic light, you won't then be shunted into the car in front, which is really a thing that every vehicle should do, putting the brakes on when you're at a stop. As we're on the freeway, let's talk about the adaptive cruise control that this car has. It's radar assisted, so it will slow down if the car in front is going slower than you are, but it also adapts to your driving style. You can set in this screen how you would like the car to behave, whether you want it to be a smooth accelerator and smooth breaker, or whether you want it to be a little bit more aggressive. That's a really cool feature. Yeah, I think anything that allows you to tune it to the way you want to experience the vehicle is really nice. And it gives you more confidence because if the car drives like you drive, you're more likely to feel comfortable. Yeah, and I'm going to say it is fairly insistent about you keeping your hand on the steering wheel. It does notice pretty quickly, unlike my car, if you take your hands off and just leave it, then it will inform you and it does so in a way which I found actually works really well. It just puts a little display up on the screen as the first point of information. If you don't do that then it will chime at you and I haven't actually waited to see if it disengages but I'm pretty certain it will fairly shortly afterwards. Also the car is telling me in the centre screen here where everybody else is around me. I've also got my head up display in front which is a great feature. I would like to see it on more cars. It tells me that the lane keep assist is active, that my cruise control is set to 56 miles per hour. It also gives me warning symbols relative to where there are other vehicles on the road. I have had a bit of a, a love-hate relationship with the head-up display. I think that's more of a personal thing. Right now it is perfect. You can set the brightness and I think on a long trip, this would be very useful because it allows me to give my full attention to the road ahead. I think if you're somebody who's gonna be spending a lot of time on the motorway, on the freeway, this head up system is great. I think for country roads, less important. Yeah, I'd have to agree there. I will say though, if you're someone like me who wears polarizing sunglasses, it basically makes the display disappear because it is based on a polarizing system. So we've talked about how it feels a little bit in sport mode. We should talk about how quick it actually is in it's sport a, mode. It throws you back in your seat. It's pretty good. It does. It has a zero to 60 or about 100 kilometers an hour in 5.2 seconds, which is more than respectable, I would say, at this point for a family hatchback. You know, I think that is obviously better than any of the other EGMP platform cars, because this is kind of the, the most powerful variant but it's the one that I think I would want because I do like that pick up and go that you get from a, a really well-tuned all-wheel drive train. Since we're on a nice quiet country lane and we haven't got a 60 limit but we've got a 55 limit let's do a little zero to 60 yeah and it definitely pushes you back in your seat okay and, and there we are there we go and for a car that weighs, what, 4,400 pounds, about 2,200 kilograms, it doesn't feel slow. It doesn't feel slow and it handles its weight really well. I know there is a little bit of waft when you're going through kind of a lot of curves and dips, but actually most of the time that suspension is dialed in really well. It is a suspension that really gives you that sporty feel. And I think that really befits this car's design because it reminds me a lot of the original Renault 5, that kind of hot hatch feel. And I think that's replicated here in a car that is technically, according to Hyundai, a SUV, but which in my head is definitely a hatchback. It definitely feels more like a hatchback and it feels at most like a compact SUV. It doesn't have the ride height or the upright driving position that I associate with an SUV. While the Kia EV6 that we drove not so long ago, which was a rear wheel drive car, only had a kind of a mediocre handling, as far as I was concerned, 
this is a very positive experience. There's a lot of feedback through the wheel. There's a lot of feedback from the suspension. And I feel I know where every corner of the car is. Yeah, with the wheels at the corner, you can really feel where you're planted on the road. Would you like me to take it out of sport mode so I stop shoving you back in the seat? You're good. Okay. I mean, we, we should probably charge it up while we're having lunch. So there you have it, the 2022 Hyundai Ioniq 5 all-wheel drive limited, although it's a little bit out of frame, Kate. Can we, can we solve that? Oh yeah, just hang on. Come on, come on, come to me. I've got some electrons. I've got some electron, no. Yeah, there you go. There you go, aren't you a good car? Aren't you a good car? That's it, that's it, that's it. Just right. Who knew that you could teach an old car new tricks, as though that is a new car, but it's based on the old pony, as you said earlier on when you were looking around. And I think that retro themed styling kind of reinvigorates a design that we haven't seen for 30 years. It brings back those kind of childhood memories of gaming, like with the pixelated lights. It's trying to bring back that thing that our generation knew growing up. And now we're at a point in history we can actually maybe, if we're lucky, afford something like this. And it's not cheap. 55,000 US dollars or thereabouts for this particular trim variant. There are lower price versions available. Who do we think is going to buy this though? I think this is really a car for families. It, not huge families, not people who want seven seat SUVs, but 2.4 kids. This will take you to and from work. It will take you on your family trips. It is perfect for that. An 800 volt rapid charging, it's just, that's revolutionary. We've experienced many, many 800 volt rapid charging cars this year. It's quickly becoming the standard for people who want to do long distance trips, who want to go and see friends, colleagues, grandparents. If you've got kids, 20 minute recharge time on the road, it's a big deal. 20 minute recharge time is enough time to herd your little micro humans into the service station get them peed, get them food, get them back out. The experience is almost the same as it would be for any rest stop with children. Yeah, yeah, and that is a game changer. So why did we like this when we hated the Kia EV6? I think the first thing is the power. This thing has enough power for its weight and it is just a more balanced driving proposition. I think also the interior of this car feels less claustrophobic, especially with that glass roof on the limited edition trim. And the whole car just feels better put together. There's less cheap materials. It feels a little bit more robust. And maybe it's because we are now the middle-aged target market for this car, as opposed to the younger Kia buyer, but it just feels a more substantial vehicle. It does, although if you stand me next to each of them, I will tell you each of them is the best looking. No, I think this is better looking than the EV6. The EV6 has a cute rear end and it's got that cute charge door, which I prefer to this one. But I think at the end of the day, this car is the one that I would want to drive and I would want to own. And I would recommend it to anybody who is experiencing a kind of a what should I buy for my next vehicle? It's definitely something you should go and drive. Absolutely. That is it for this video. And if you haven't already checked our walk around and look inside, do make sure that you do. We've linked to it in the description below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below in our free to join Discord chat room. There is a link down there in the video description. And if you really liked it, why not leave us a super thanks? It's easy to do and everything you send goes towards helping us make great content. If you haven't already, do make sure that you've subscribed to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolved Take Two, and be sure to give the bell a gentle ding to make sure that you are told when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to everyone that makes TE possible. That includes everyone that supports us on Patreon and YouTube. And if you're a supporter at the charged up level, you'll see your name right here on my right. 
As always, thanks to our self-driving tier supporters, Chris Maxwell, Pedro Muropin Hero, Patrick Boyarski, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ray Jean Fellows, Jim Burness, Chris Asenta, Chris and Michael Johnson, Peter Dillinger and Denny Hyde, and of course, super Starman out of this world. Thanks to our Starman supporters. They are Anonymous Freak, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Rory Litwin, Joe Bresney, Redar, JP Fagerback, Russ, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, Ellery Hensley. And of course, Ian. If you would like to be part of that amazing list, it is super easy. You can join Patreon at the link below. You can hit the join button to support us on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, or you can show us your support through Kofi or by buying a t-shirt like this one from our cool swag store. Links below. And if you're unable to support us financially, just know that watching the video and sharing it really makes a difference to our ad revenue. As usual, thanks for joining us. And until next time, Keep evolving. I wasn't ready for that. That wasn't even 60, that was 55. Because it's 55 limit and I would never break the speed limit. LED lights here with their You have these, uh, well,